Ariel from Seattle Coffee Gear, and today we are going to be talking about coffee processing methods. This is probably one of my favorite things to talk about. So a processing method basically means what the farmer does to the coffee after it's been picked. And there are several common ones. Um, that is going to be washed, which is the most common. Second is going to be sun-dried or natural. Third is going to be honey processed. After that, we have some different processing methods like wet hulling, which happens in Indonesia co Indonesian coffees. And then there are also experimental processing methods, which are newer. Um, for example, we have one that is a mixed fermentation. There's double fermentation, lactic acid. Um, so why don't we just go ahead and get into it? So washed processing methods, that is the most common. So those typically happen in the Latin American countries um, and sometimes in African countries as well. So what happens is the beans are sorted and then the outer part of the bean, essentially the fruit, is washed um, and then the coffee dries. Now this tends to give you some more delicate nuanced flavors. You can get, um, you know, flavors of nuts and citrus, um, spice, sometimes fruit. And then with naturally processed coffees, those are most common in African coffees. It's the most traditional form of processing method. It also uses the least amount of water. So what happens there is after the coffee is picked, they lay them out on these giant drying beds and they rake them constantly um, to prevent the fruit from rotting or forming mold. Um, and this is all while the sun is slowly drying the coffee out. Now this produces a coffee that is very fruity. Typically with naturally processed coffees, you will get notes of berries and red fruit. Um, so that's where you get your blueberry and your raspberry tasting notes. Then we have wet hulled coffee processing methods. Now those happen in Indonesia. It's similar to washed, but it's a much faster process because it is extremely wet and humid. So basically what the farmer is trying to do is get the coffee to lose as much moisture as possible as quickly as possible so that they can sell them. This typically removes a lot of the sweetness, but also adds kind of more of a thick, fuller syrupy body. And you'll get a lot of tasting notes of tobacco or cedar. So wet hulled coffees tend to be a lot more savory. With honey processing, like we have from our newest roasting partner, Black and White, it's <laughs> kind of hard to describe. It's kind of like naturally processed and washed, got together and had a baby. So they will wash off the outer layer and then the mucilage is what's left and then you have the bean inside. And so they will basically kind of rake those out like you do with a sun-dried coffee until the mucilage starts to change color and becomes very sticky, hence honey. So it will take on like a honey-like texture. And from there you have black honey, yellow honey, red honey. So those are just different steps along the lines. Black honey is going to be the longest. And then we also have experimental processing methods. And those are a lot newer. They involve fermenting the coffee. Um, so basically they will put it in a vat and shut off oxygen. Now this promotes the growth of certain bacteria which then produce lactic or acetic acids. And what those do is they tend to give you that sort of fruity, syrupy, heavy body, um, but it also coaxes out a lot of the brighter notes in the coffee. So it just kind of intensifies the brightness. So today, we're going to be brewing up a couple of different ones. So we have black and whites Aponte Honey uh, from Colombia, which is going to have notes of baked apple, cola, and dark honey. So it's gonna be this one here. 
And I actually got this one from one of my favorite coffee roasters, uh, Brandywine Coffee. So this is a um, Colombian coffee. It's double fermented um, and then it's washed. So what they do here is they do a brief fermentation, they wash it and inspect it, and then they ferment it again. And it is going to have tasting notes of stone fruit, almond, nougat, lime, and a little bit of orange. And it's gonna be this one here. I'm just gonna do some quick math here. <laughs> So I have 25 grams in each V60. I'm going to do a one to 15 ratio. So I'm just going to get started here. Now these were both roasted relatively recently, which is why I am using less water because they're still going to be pretty roasty. So if you want to get rid of the roastier tasting notes, if you just can't wait for that coffee to get off gas, then you do less water and more coffee and that will leave the, it will pull out the actual tasting notes of the coffee rather than the roastiness that you will typically get. And smell them. They both smell pretty fruity, although this double fermentation one definitely has a much more bright note. This one to me smells more kind of like a dried fruit. So as I'm brewing, I just kind of want to touch on sun-dried coffees again. Um, so one benefit about sun-dried coffees, besides them using significantly less water, is there is also a delicious, delicious byproduct that I have used in previous videos called cascara, and that is actually the husk of the coffee cherry. Um, and you can use that for tea. Um, it has a very sweet, almost kind of raisiny flavor. Super delicious. And you can get that from some of our roasters. Um, Onyx Coffee Lab has a cascara, as does Methodical Coffee Roasters. So that is definitely something worth checking out. It's great as a syrup. It's great as a tea. You can um, infuse some sugar with it if you like rimming your glasses with a garnish of sugar. nearly done here. So I'm just waiting for it to hit 375 and then I'm going to stop my pour and let it do its thing. Okay. I'm so excited to taste these. I really get excited when I see experimental processes because they taste so different from anything else. All right, so this guy is done. I'm gonna pop him in the sink. Ooh, smells amazing. And I like using V60s just because it tends to really just pull out some of the more delicate notes. It's, it's a very gentle flavor that it gives you. All right, so this one is the double fermented coffee. And right off the bat, it's, it smells very bright. So I'm getting a lot of that kind of that lime note on the nose. 
remember with coffee tasting, you want to stick your nose in it. You don't want to do this. Mm. This is super, super delicious. I'm definitely... getting it's kind of getting more of the cherry and the nougat and a little bit of the almond but as far as the fragrance goes that's where the the citrus notes are hitting me it's a very mild coffee it has kind of a tea-like body very fruity this is really really good All right, and now we are going to give the honey processed one to try. Yeah, this one definitely smells very different. It smells a lot more sugary. It, it feels, it almost smells heavier in a way. That cola tasting note is very prominent in this. It's a very sweet, heavy coffee. It has kind of a, it lingers on your tongue, so it's almost, it's almost sticky the way it, it feels in your mouth. It's definitely a lot more dense. And then the apple kind of hits you at the end. I don't know which one I like more, <laughs> but um, yeah. So the that's the amazing thing about coffee is it it's kind of a miracle in and of itself because it takes so much work to produce and then so much effort and work goes into making sure that it's processed correctly. Um, and you know, if if one thing goes wrong, then you basically have an entire crop that gets ruined. So it definitely gives you kind of a, a healthy appreciation when you start researching and reading into this, you know, just the amount of hard work that goes into farming the coffee and processing it. Um, it really is just, just an amazing plant, an amazing product. Um, so definitely give all of these different processing methods a try. You'll definitely be pleasantly surprised by how different they taste from each other. Um, but anyway, thank you for joining me. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Leave a comment below. We'll see you next time. Thank you so much, guys. Oh, yes.